Hello, my friends. Welcome to the first video of 2023. I'm Jeanette with Vivol Vintage Designs. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. So happy to have you here on this channel. We learn watercolor and alcohol ink together. I'm really looking forward to this new year. I have so many ideas on different things that I want to share with you. So I hope that you will join me. Okay, today we're going to be working with alcohol ink, but we're going to be working with a dry palette. So I have my color chart here, my dry palette, some alcohol, a small piece of photo paper. We will be working on the matte side of the photo paper, not the glossy side. And I have a few different brushes. I'm not sure which ones I will need, so I wanted to make sure I had them all available to me and I have a watercolor pencil. Now I use a watercolor pencil on photo paper because regular pencil doesn't show up very well, at least on this brand of photo paper, which is Amazon Basics. So I use a simple, inexpensive watercolor pencil. And today's painting will be of a feather. Now I've not even tried this, and if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I like to share things with you, the good, the bad, the ugly, and first attempts, my successes, my failures, everything. So um, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to draw the shape of my feather. So I'm going to start with the bottom part, and I'm going to draw this really light. And then just a basic shape of a feather. It's almost like a leaf shape that I'm drawing. And then I want to make sure that I keep the center vein in the feather and that I don't paint over that. So I'm going to draw it in so that I have a guide. I know where to paint and where not to paint. And again, I've not tried this yet, so I have no idea <laughs> if this is going to work. I will be doing another video on this with watercolor, but today we're working with alcohol ink. So if you're not familiar with a dry palette, I will link a video in the description box that will explain how to create one, how to use one, and why you would want to use one. So. All right, I'm actually a little nervous because I'm not sure how this is going to work. And as usual, my brushes are dirty, so let's get those clean right from the get-go. This one is really dirty. I'm not even sure I'm going to use it, but I might as well clean it. And if you're working with alcohol ink and a dry palette, don't use expensive brushes. Make sure you use inexpensive brushes that you can just throw away in a month or so because alcohol is really hard on brushes. So if you also do watercolor, do not use your watercolor brushes for alcohol ink. All right, so um, I'm not sure what colors I want to use. Maybe like bluish colors and maybe some purples. So, you know what? Let's just dive right in. So for the uh, top portion of my painting, I'm going to use some cloudy blue and I'm just going to paint that in. And I'm gonna kind of feather it out as I get to the edge. I'm using the smallest brush I have. I'm trying to stay away from that center vein. And I'm just going over it and trying to use just the very tip of my brush to kind of soften it and create those little feathery looking pieces. And as the ink dries, you'll get these lines in it, which is what I am hoping for. So you get some demarcation lines where you get those crispy little drying edges. Just go over them. Notice I'm not wetting my brush anymore. I'm just going over the ink that's already on the paper. I'm talking like I've done this before, huh? 
<laughs> I'm actually just winging it here. But this is how you learn. You know, you, you face your fears, you give it a try. It's just ink and paper. So it's in your time. So um, I find that this is how I learn best is by just doing it. So again, you see as the ink is drying that I get little lines in the ink. And that's what I'm thinking will work best for this. So now I'm going to switch to, um, I'm going to use a combination, a combination of cloudy blue and stonewash for my next color. And I'm going to start, no, oh, that's a little dark. I add a little bit more of the cloudy blue because I kind of wanted to blend it together. So again, keeping away from that center vein. Well, trying to anyway. I'm going to grab another little paintbrush, clean off some of the alcohol, I mean ink, off of there, and let's continue. And you can blot your brush also to remove some of the alcohol that's on it and then just keep going over it and if you get ink on your center vein there don't worry about it because we can clean that up just like you saw me do with a paintbrush and I'm going to go over the color that I added prior to this one so that it kind of blends together all right now I'm just going to pick up the cloudy blue alone Dab my brush and I'm going to start down here. I'm going over the color that I added prior just to kind of blend it in a little bit. From there, I'm going to go into a little eggplant. Now I'm going to start creating some spaces in between my little swipes here. And if I just covered up that space that I tried to leave, but that's okay because I can use my brush to clean that up. So make sure that you're blotting your brush on your paper towel to remove a lot of that alcohol so that your um, ink doesn't balloon on your paper. And again, go over the color that you applied prior to this one just to kind of blend it in a little bit so it's not so harsh. I think you're probably better off going over that center vein and cleaning it up later on. All right, my next color, I'm going to use a combination of eggplant and amethyst to transition. It's really dark. I might actually pick up a little bit of a darker blue. I'm going to try denim just to blend this in a little bit more and not have it be so, um, the transition so harsh. Just cleaning off my brush here and using it with just damp with alcohol. I'm going to try and soften this color a little bit. On this side, I'm adding a little bit more color. Now I'm just picking up a little bit of that cloudy blue, trying to kind of make it blend a little bit more. So I'm going to carry that all the way down to the bottom, just to soften it up a little bit, making sure I remove as much of the alcohol from my brush. And then I think I'll pick up a little bit of the um, stone wash. Kind of use that to blend in up here. OK, 
Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that this is completely dry because I'm gonna go in with some darker colors here and there, or rather a heavier consistency of the color, I should say. So I'm switching to this tiny little brush now. Uh, this is a size, I think a zero. And I'm gonna pick up a really heavy load of the uh, cloudy blue. And I'm gonna just clean that, dab some of that alcohol off. And I'm gonna try and create some lines, some darker lines. It's not really working. Let's move to the cloudy blue. That's more of the look that I'm going for. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe lifting some will help to create a little bit more depth. Actually, you know, I think what I may do is I may use my um, fine liners to add the detail that I want. And I think that may do the trick. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean off my brush in the alcohol. And I'm going to try and lift, oh, that's too much alcohol, no. I'm actually going to use these um, alcohol blending pens and I'm going to lift some of this out using just the very tip. And any areas that I don't like, I'm just gonna lift them right out. When you're using one of these blending pens, make sure that you clean it off on a paper towel so that you're not just moving the color from one area to another. So you have to make sure that your tip is clean. This is actually turning out to be more work than I thought it would be. I thought this was going to be so easy. a little let me see if uh, using the chiseled edge just to clean off these areas here that I'm not crazy about works better I just don't want it to be too crazy Switch to the chip, I mean the uh, pointy tip here to clean this up. I'm going to try and clean up the center vein. this through here a little bit to soften up some of these lines. Let me use the other side because this may be too thick. I may regret this, but we'll soon find out. Yeah, I'm kind of regretting it. So before it dries too much, I'm just going to use paintbrush just dipped in alcohol to soften it up actually you know I kind of like that look all right I'm getting all kinds of ideas I'm thinking that maybe if I spray it with a little bit of alcohol let me see if I can find one of my mini misters okay this is a mini mister by Ranger and I love these because it sprays out just a really fine mist so I'm going to from a distance Spray a little bit of alcohol over this. I think I'm missing the entire painting. Oh, I like that. Can you see that? Let's we'll see what it did. I'm gonna cover this because I want a little bit more on the top. All right, that may have been too much. <laughs> Darn it. I had it just right. Let me let it dry before I start playing with it. 
but I love the way it looks down here. It really softened it up a little bit, but up here I sprayed too much. I sprayed it too close. That was the problem. So, uh, nope, I gotta wait for it to dry a little bit. Got all kinds of crazy things happening up on top. But you know me, I don't give up. I'm going to clean up the shape because it really spread a lot. So I'm just gonna try and lift some of that color off of there. And again, you gotta make sure you clean your tip Diesel, are you okay? My poor little man, he's getting so old. But he still follows me from room to room, wherever I am, he's got to be. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my tiny brush, I'm gonna dip it in some alcohol, and I'm going to try and run it through here and see if I can get those wispy little like, you know, maybe picking up a little bit of ink might help. Again, no clue what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. Trying to see what works, what doesn't work. This is so much easier when you're using a uh, watercolor. For me, at least. I know a lot of people are afraid of watercolor, but... Um, such a wonderful medium to work with and it does take some getting used to but I plan to do some videos this year to introduce you all to watercolor and take away some of that fear so this isn't really working all that well but I am not giving up I kind of I really like the way this part looks and I even like this part. I think that maybe, I don't know. I'm going to try and spray it from a distance and see what happens. Because obviously what I was doing wasn't working. All right. That's not too bad. Let me let it dry. Rather, let me dry it. Oops. And then I'll give it another quick squirt from a distance. Did I miss it all together? I think I'm getting the alcohol everywhere but where I want it. Okay, I'm liking that. I want to dry it before it gets a little too crazy. All right, now that we have that, I am going to use my smallest nib. I think that's a 25. Oh my goodness, it's always the very last one. All right, so I have two micron pens, um, a one and a 005, a 01005. So this one, I usually look at this part here that's how I know what size I'm going for. These numbers, I wish I'd noticed them before because it makes, makes life a lot easier. But I'm going to use the thicker nib. This is just a 0.25, again, a size 01. And I am very lightly going to create the center vein. And I'm using my sketchy, skippy little lines. I don't want it to be really, really defined. And I'm going to take it all the way to almost the very top and then I'm going to come back down on the other side. Again, very sketchy, skippy little lines. Bring it down to the bottom. Like that. And 
that's the thicker nib. So I think now I'm going to switch to the smaller nib. This is a 0 0.20005, and I am going to, you know what, I'm not going to do too much because I really like the way this looks, but I do want to create those shorter little fuzzy, let me go in just a very lightly to add a little more definition. Again, really, really light, just draw a few lines here and there. And then down here, you know, you always have those little crazy ones. But here towards the bottom, I'm going to add just a little bit more detail to make those kind of blend in a little bit more. I'm wondering if I use the... <laughs> I'm getting daring because those marks look a little bit too dark. So I'm going to use the alcohol blending pen while that ink is still wet. And I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to soften them a little bit so it's not so harsh against the softness of the feathers that, you know, what we've created so far. I think they're important down there, but I don't want them to stand out so much. So again, the ink is still wet, so I can soften it, and I really like the way that looks. Now, you can cut this down and use it as a bookmark. I really like the way this turned out. I'm very surprised. I was not expecting it. I thought I had ruined it, but I tell you all the time, don't give up on your paintings. Just keep playing with it because even if you think you've messed it up, how much worse can it get? Instead, it can turn out to be something really pretty that you're really proud of. And I think this would make a really great bookmark or if you do a few of them, you can simply frame them. Something so simple can be so pretty in a nice frame. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning this technique with me and that you give it a try. Uh, I would love to see how you do. So you can share your version of the paintings and techniques learned on this channel on our Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Design Tutorials. I uh, would love to see how you do. And um, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the description box for links to the products used as well as the link to the video on the uh, dry palette. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. You know I'll always get back to you. All right, thanks so much. See you in the next one. Bye.